The thing I want to spend more time on today is not the islands themselves, but I want to propose a solution to the problem. And the solution to the problem is in the history. The history of uh, Japan and Korea involves a lot of violence from Japan against Korea. This is Mark Peterson with the Frog Outside the Well Research Center. And today I'm in going to introduce a video that I made for the students in Idaho. Uh, Boise State University asked me to record um, a video for the students in the college and some high school students about Dokdo. And the way I look at Dokdo is that um, the other way to understand Dokdo is to understand the relationship between Korea and Japan. Dokdo is not just a couple of islands in the middle of the East Sea. Um, it's more than that. It's symbol of the history of uh, Korea and Japan. Um, so today I'm going to introduce a three-part video. Um, the lecture I divided into three parts and it's the purpose is to understand the meaning of the fight over Dokdo. We need to look at the violence and the war crimes that are committed by Japan against Korea over their history. Uh, part one, we'll look at the meaning of Dokdo and first the Hideyoshi invasion of 1592. Part two, we'll look at the Kanghua Treaty and the forced colonization of Korea, the Kangto massacre, and World War II war crimes, specifically uh, comfort women. And part three, we'll look at the Korean War and Japanese profiteering over the Korean War. And then I have a proposed solution to the Tokyo issue, which is also a solution to the Korean-Japanese uh, animosity over the centuries. So here's part one, the meaning of Tokyo and the Hideyoshi invasion of Korea. Hello everyone at Boise State, or at least the Korean club there. It's nice to see you, it's nice to visit with you. Um, I'm honored to be asked to make this presentation for you. And I've been asked to talk about Dokdo. And Dokdo is not an easy subject. I've got some uh, PowerPoint here that I want to go through with you. Yeah, the Dokdo, uh, the issue is of course the relationship with uh, Japan between Korea and Japan. Of course, it's contested. Japan claims the island and Korea claims and occupies the island. Since it occupies the island, it has a much stronger uh, case. Uh, the island is really two islands. Uh, Dokdo means solitary island, implying there's one, but there are really two and a bunch of little outcroppings all around the place. That's quite beautiful. Uh, we'll talk about it. It's located almost equally distant between uh, Korea and Japan. Japan argues that it's closer to the mainland of Japan than it is to the mainland of uh, Korea. But Korea argues that it's closer to Ulungdo, which is an inhabited island by Korea, uh, closer to Ulungdo than it is to Okido, the Japanese island. So the spatial argument is not a very strong argument. There are a lot of arguments. Uh, which one is closer, we talked about, doesn't get us very far. There are legal arguments, there are historical arguments, there are cultural arguments, political arguments, and moral ethical arguments. I'm gonna go over these in uh, a quick detail and then talk a little bit about uh, what I see as the solution to the problem. Um, the Japanese version is of course, the islands called Takashima and they call it the man island and the woman island. Uh, their names for it. And then they, here's their distances claiming that they're uh, closer to the mainland, although they're farther away from another island. Uh, here's the Korean version of, of the same thing, emphasizing the proximity to Ulungdo, which makes it closer to the uh, uh, Korean uh, uh, territory. And of course, it's located in the East Sea, not the Sea of Japan. That's another issue. Uh, the law of the sea says that uninhabitable islands cannot be claimed as territory. Uh, so the Koreans have occupied it and made it inhabitable. But inhabitable means a source of water and food, and there's not a source of water on the island. Uh, and the food is only the fish in the sea um, and a bird if you catch one. Uh, 
so the law of the sea doesn't really help either side. Uh, fishing rights is an issue because it's right in the middle and both sides want to claim the fishing waters around it. Then of course, there's the ter territorial waters, the 12 mile limit around uh, property, which gives Korea an advantage or Japan an advantage if they can claim the, uh, the island. Uh, maps is a real uh, problem. Uh, if uh, I were to concentrate just on the maps issue, I could talk for two or three hours. There's a lot of interesting material about the maps. Uh, but I'm going to uh, uh, just brush over the map issue just briefly and, and claim that Korea has the better uh, argument as far as maps are concerned. Uh, as far as precedents are concerned, uh, there's another alternative that is to call it the Leon Court Rocks. A uh, British uh, guy named them this, and uh, that's a neutral uh, term. And sometimes you'll see on maps the term Leon Court right, uh, rocks because they avoid Dokdo and Takashima and the controversy by using the old British term for it. Uh, the problem is with this uh, Japanese claim is it really did not take effect until Japan defeated Russia in uh, the war of 1905. And at that point, uh, Japan took an interest in those rocks that were really uh, uh, not interesting to anybody, although Korea probably had a better claim for it. But uh, uh, this is the beginning of imperialism, of the Japanese imperial uh, conquest. And you say, well, what's Russia got to do with it? Well, the, the fight between Russia and Japan was mainly in the waters on the east and the west of uh, Korea. And so when Japan defeated Russia, uh, they gave them uh, interest in claiming those, uh, those waters uh, and everything in it, and including the, the island. Uh, here's one of the more interesting maps. This was discovered uh, about 10 years ago that an old Japanese textbook showed that uh, Dokdo, the two little islands of Ulundo and Dokdo were clearly within the uh, Korean territorial waters, not within the Japanese territorial waters. So uh, Koreans claim not only their maps and Chinese maps uh, give Korea credit for owning Tokto, but even Japanese maps do as well. Uh, the uh, cultural and political issue is that Tokto is the last vestige of colonialism of the time when Japan took over Korea from 1910 to 1945. And the first step of this was the 1905 uh, protectorate of Korea, uh, claiming Tokdo as a Japanese territory. Uh, linguistically, neither one of these claims is very good because Tokdo is not a solitary island. It's two islands. They ought to call it Hyungjesom. Off of Pusan, there are two islands that stick up together that are called Hyungjesom, the brother islands. Uh, there'd be a better name for it than Tokdo. Uh, the Japanese claim is not very good because they call it Takashima, which is bamboo island. There's not a, not a sprout of bamboo that grows on the place. So linguistically, they don't have a good claim either. Morally and ethically, what's the issue here? The problem here is that uh, Japan has territorial uh, fights with all of its neighbors. It's fighting with Russia over the Kural Islands, which are just north of Hokkaido. And Japan wants to claim the four bigger Kuril Islands, and Russia says no, that they're theirs. The islands stretch all the way up to the uh, uh, Kamchatka Peninsula, and uh, uh, the upper part of those islands are clearly Russian, occupied by Russians. But the lower part of the islands, too, the islands that Japan wants to claim are occupied by Russians. It's Russians who live on the island. There, there are virtually no Japanese there at all. And then there's the Takashima dispute with uh, Korea, both North and South Korea. And then there's a dispute over the uh, Dayu Islands down close to Taiwan. And here, Taiwan and mainland China both claim these islands, and then Japan wants to claim them as well. So uh, Japan's in a fight with all of its neighbors over uh, uh, islands and territorial claims. The point here, as far as Dokdo is concerned, is that if Korea, if China, uh, Japan gave up its claim on Dokdo Island, it would weaken their claim on the Kuril Islands and the uh, Daoyu Island as well. So, uh, and maybe that's not a bad idea. Maybe they ought to give up all their fighting on all these things and take a more ethical 
uh, non-interventionist uh, uh, position. Uh, here's another map showing the three major areas where Japan is having fights with its neighbors. The thing I want to spend more time on today is not the islands themselves, but I want to propose a solution to the problem. And the solution to the problem is in the history. The history of uh, Japan and Korea involves a lot of violence from Japan against Korea. And uh, you can't find a case of Korean violence against Japan, unless you look really, really hard. Some people say there was a retribution against the Japanese that they left in 1945. That's minimal compared to all of the awful things, absolutely awful things, absolutely violent, horrendous things that the Japanese have done to the Koreans. Uh, starting off with pirates, uh, early, early on, uh, the Korean coastline has been plagued with Japanese pirates. Uh, the major event, though, historically, was the Hideyoshi invasion in 1592. This was absolutely horrendous. It was one of the worst world wars. It was a world war because China, Korea, and Japan were involved. And uh, up to that point, with between two and four million Koreans killed, it was uh, one of the worst wars in world history up to that point. And it was just naked invasion. Uh, there was no moral uh, attitude about it at all. It's just that Hideyoshi wanted more land. He had conquered all of Japan. And Japan is always fighting. You've got the daimyo, the samurai, in various regions. Uh, you don't have a central state. You have an emperor, but he controls uh, power through the daimyo, the regional lords. And um, uh, from time to time, the alliance falls apart and another lord wants to rise up and become the shogun, who is the one who controls it all, who even controls the emperor. And uh, Japan went through generations, decades, centuries of this kind of fighting. And in 1592, this rather upstart, really brutal general by the name of uh, Hideyoshi Toyotomi uh, unified all of Japan and thought, well, there's greater worlds to conquer, and he wanted to conquer China. Uh, Korea was just sort of an incident along the way, but of course their armies were stopped in, in uh, uh, Korea. Uh, but in the process, the uh, blood and death and disease and theft, uh, the Japanese stole everything that was worth anything they could get their hands on. They kidnapped people. There are still several villages in Japan of kidnapped Koreans who are pottery makers. And Koreans prize this uh, uh, earthenware that the uh, uh, Korean prisoners, for generation after generation of generation, they're, they're Japanese now, but they were originally prisoners from uh, Korea. So the Hideyoshi invasion was a bloody awful thing for which uh, Japan uh, has never uh, compensated or made a proper uh, retribution for. Uh, it's just lost in history. Uh, 